Welcome to this video on how to use Logger Pro. It's a very user-friendly but powerful program. What you can start with is just seeing that we have a spreadsheet view here and a graphing view over here, all at the same time, so it's very easy to see the connection between the two. I'm just gonna start with making up some data so that we can illustrate what happens. So first I'll start with my x-axis, which is the horizontal axis down here. This is usually your independent variable or what you're manipulating in the experiment. And then I'll make up some data for the um, y-axis or the vertical axis, which is usually your dependent variable or what you're measuring in the experiment. So you can see as we type in the two, in all the data points, they actually show up automatically on the graph. So that's very convenient. So. Um, now we have to take a look at, okay, well, what do we need to communicate clearly? Um, first thing we notice is that some of our data points are actually right on the edge, and that's not very good. We actually want there to be some space so we can see the whole data point. Um, so we're going to have to move those axes around. Uh, we can see here that X and Y are not descriptive. We don't know what these actual axes mean, so we're going to have to change that. And we don't have a title. So there's a few things that we're going to just start with. Uh, manipulating. So the first thing is we can change the, the data labels by just going over here and just double clicking. So the x-axis come up with a descriptive name for your independent variable what it actually is and then you want to have units. So I'm just writing general here you need to be specific and same thing for the y-axis your dependent variable and with the units. It's very important that you put the units in brackets so that we know what the numbers represent. All right, now the next part is to sort of get these points off the off the edge of the graph. So it's a little tricky here. Um, you have to position your cursor not so that you see that, um, not so that you see the squiggly line. You could do it with the squiggly line, but it's not as, as easy. Um, it's when you get this normal cursor in between. Uh, so you can either double click here or, or same thing down here, just position your cursor so it's in between those two. And it doesn't matter if you double click on the Y or X axis, this option menu will come up. So axis options, um, the Y axis you can see here, 0 to 10. So what we can do is we can extend that um, to um, 11 or 12, you can make your own judgment call. And then over here we have the x-axis and we can see that we need to go a little bit lower than zero so that it's not on there. So we'll try maybe negative two. And then um, we can actually notice that a lot of the space over here is kind of empty. And so our graph should always incorporate or our data should always inco incorporate most of the space of our graph. So I'm going to try and reduce that back and it looks like 6 would still give us some space on the right. So I'm going to change that to 6. So let's click OK. And now we can see that our graph is zoomed in a little more. But I see here there's maybe too much empty space on the left. So I'm just going to go back and double click. And maybe instead of negative 2 I'll go with negative 1. And there, that looks nice and balanced. I have space uh, around all of my data points, but not too much. So the focus is on the data. Now looking at the title, we need a title. So again, just positioning your cursor and double clicking. What we'll do is we'll click Graph Options. Now a title, you can come up with a descriptive title. And one way to do that is saying like your dependent variable versus your independent variable. But something that when someone reads it, they can tell what the graph is about. Now that we've sort of got that out of the way, we need to think about analyzing the data. What does it represent? So the first thing is you need to make a judgment call. You need to look at the, the trend of the data and decide what does it look like. Um, does it look like, for example, a linear relationship? Does it look like a curved relationship? Uh, in this case, we can tell it's linear. So what we'll do is we'll just click linear fit. So what you can see is the software generates a line of best fit for you and it automatically gives you um, the equation of that line in the form of y equals mx plus b. So you'd replace the m with the slope that it generates 
um, the y-intercept with what it generates. Um, and then the other two you probably don't need um, unless you're doing sort of an analysis statistically of, of how good this is. Now we don't want this box printed in the end so once you've got the data you need um, what you can do is you can actually go to um, double click on that on that box and then what you can do is uncheck the show on graph and then it will just give you the data so you don't want the box to be in your final copy you want it to be here um, you, you, you want just the, the data with the line of best fit so that's how we would analyze it um, and generate a really good graph. After that, you want to definitely save this so that you can edit it later. Um, you can also print the graph, which will allow you to save it as a PDF or just print it out um, for your report. Um, but quite often, you'll actually want to be able to import this into another document. Um, and unfortunately, that's one thing this program doesn't do exceptionally well. Um, so what you could do is you could screenshot this and then crop it. Um, in the Mac, what you would just do is Command-Shift-3, and that would put a screenshot on your desktop that you could crop the edges out of, uh, and then you could import that picture into your lab report that you're actually working on. All right, so let's say we have a different set of data. So let's go with something like, um, like this, maybe... All right, so we can see here, following the, the trend, um, it's actually looking like a curve. It's not looking linear at all. So we're going to have to change that. And we can also see now that our um, last values are, again, touching the axes. So we'll just go through that quick process of changing so that we can actually model the data correctly. So at the top here, I'll maybe put to 26 and then the minimum since it's touching the zero uh, maybe I'll make my bottom negative one and so now there's some space in between so you can make a judgment call if you want even more space in that um, that's fine so we want to get rid of this linear fit since it's actually meaningless um, so what we want to do is go to option and additional object options and remember back we hid the equation that little equation box um, now we need to click Reveal Hidden Objects to bring that back so that we can click the X that removes the linear fit. That's the only way you can get rid of it. Otherwise, you can end up with two, um, the one we're about to put on and the original. So since this is curved, we're going to click Curve Fit. And what you can see is it comes up with uh, a preview window and then several models of general equations. So you can see here linear equation, quadratic equation, cubic equation. Um, those um, four are common. And then power and inverse and inverse square are also quite common. So it, And it gives you many others. A lot of these are not ones that you're going to have to actually um, use because uh, they're going to be ones more for university level. So first of all, what you can do is you can sort of take a look at one and click Try Fit. And you'll see the preview and then you ask yourself, well, does that fit the data? So clearly these two, you know, it's not a linear relationship. So you might go to Quadratic and you can see here that that's very closely modeling it. But you don't want to just stop there. You want to try and see if anything else models it. And one way to help you guide that decision may be just looking at these variables here and deciding, you know, do these numbers mean anything in the context of your experiment? So going down, going to power, try fit, uh, I can see that one is looking a lot closer uh, and variable power will give me a similar result. So what I have to do, and then I can try inverse and see, well, that doesn't uh, match at all. So I have to try and decide, you know, these two look like they might be better. Uh, so what I would want to do is, in deciding which one it is, I would think about my experiment. Um, what would each of these numbers mean? What would this A represent? What would this N represent? And then try to choose it based on that. 
but I also don't want to totally rely on what the software is generated. I might want to generate something more meaningful. So for example, 1.013 might not actually be meaningful here. And since it's very close to 1, I might change that to 1. You can see here it switches to manual. And so what this does is it gives me a very clean equation. It would be 1 or uh, times x, so in other words, x to the power of 2. Now that seems to very closely match what it is. And then I could think to the experiment, well, what is that um, 1 and that 2? Does that actually make sense? And then if it does, I would prefer to use this rather than just relying on what the software automatically generated um, with those extra decimal points. So don't just blindly accept what the computer gets. You sort of look at it as a starting point and then see if you can modify it to something that actually makes more sense. And then you can see here, um, that's what it has generated for us. So again, we just want to hide this um, curve fit. We've got, uh, you can generate the equation from there. Uh, we're just going to take that from show on graph. So now we'll just quickly look at, now that we've generated a couple different models, linear or this one, uh, what can we do with the software to find points along that model we've chosen? So what we can do is we can go to Analyze, Interpolate, and what it will do is in the bottom left corner, it will generate the x comma y for any point along your model. So you might use that to try and predict or, or interpolate a reading in your data set, or you might use it to extrapolate beyond your data set. Um, that would be one way to find some values. Uh, some of you may need to take the tangent uh, at, for example, a curve. So what you can see here is it will give you the tangent at each one. And it will give you, of course, what you're looking for, um, the slope of that tangent, which may be useful for what you're studying. So those values can come out as well as you're going through this. Overall, that should be everything that you would ever need um, in terms of this course uh, to be able to analyze your data.